Welcome. I was so delighted to be with you in the Lord's Word, in His Word. Greetings, this is uh, Dolores Johnson Spears, pastor of Kingdom Church House of Prayer. You tonight, and I'm just going to lift up a prayer. May the Lord bless and keep us. May He cause His face to shine upon us. May He lift up His countenance unto us and grant us His peace in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. Welcome to Fresh Word. We're here today, Pastor Dolores Johnson Spears, for the word from the Lord. Uh, we reside here in Albany, Georgia, Pastor Kingdom Church House of Prayer. Just delighted to be with you today. And we're going to um, read uh, Psalms 24 and just share some highlights from this psalm. This psalm blessed me when I was a little girl. I'm 73 years old now. But uh, I had a teacher when I was a little girl that taught me this psalm, you know, in the public school system years ago. It was just a part of learning. Uh, Christianity, the teachers brought the scriptures, uh, they shared them with us, they would even pray with us. It was just a part of the educational arena back then. And I never will forget this particular teacher taught us the 24 psalms. You talk about a powerful psalm, power pack. The Word of God is power pack. The Word of God itself is power pack. But this is one of my favorites. And God always speaks to me through this psalm. So I'll just read all of it and then we'll come back and we'll discuss some points. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the sea, and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend unto the hills of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul under vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him. That seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just uh, want to remind everybody that we're living in a world now where scientists want to take credit for this and that, uh, things that they discover. Um, uh, God is allowing scientists to discover what he has already made, what has already been in existence. He's allowing them to give a word or an understanding, partial understanding of what he has already established. I want to emphasize that the world does not belong to man. The earth does not belong to man. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness there are. I know sometimes well, that is a scripture and sometimes we get a little confused that Satan is the God of this world. That's different from the earth being the Lord. When it says that Satan is, a, is the God of this world, it simply means that the spirit of evil, uh, people have yielded to the spirit of, of, of evil. And, and we have to invite the Holy Spirit. We have to invite heaven to invade earth. earth. Give us this day our daily bread. And because of the authority of the creator of the universe, the authority of God Almighty, uh, a Satan has to bow to God. When we invite God into a situation, even though uh, uh, Satan is the God of this world, when you invite heaven to be a part of a situation that is dark on this earth, uh, Satan has to bow. He has to yield to the spirit of the living God. Now he may not, uh, uh, the spirit may not influence the person to live right. The spirit may not influence the person to give their lives to God. 
But even though there is an influence from Satan in that person's life, because the earth belongs to the Lord, that person has to bow to the Spirit of God. God has the ability. Now, uh, uh, they always have choices. They always have choices. But when God says that the earth belongs to the Lord, He's letting us know that He's the highest authority. He's letting us know that this earth is His creation. He's letting us know that if we stay with Him, there is no power greater than the power that comes from heaven. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ. And He shall reign forever and ever and remember I believe it's Isaiah 9 and 6 that the government is upon the Lord's shoulder so no matter what is going on uh, on this earth no matter how dark it gets no matter if we are a child of God we have an advantage we know our, our father or we're getting to know our father he is the greatest source of power God does not want us to be afraid of anything. So as we go down these verses, I want you to have it in your spirit that when I receive the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, I've done something that's very uh, outstanding. I've done something that can give me security. Uh, I'm in the family of God. Uh, he, he, he protects me. His blood covers me. And so when you make that decision, it's like Satan has to back off. I don't care how much power he has. His power is not as great as our father's, our daddy's, our father's power. He has to literally back off. We have to acknowledge that Jesus is Lord of our lives. And if people are going through changes today, they're not understanding. They're saying, where is God? And one mistake we have made at one point we have not honored because perhaps we don't understand is that you do have to receive the invitation and accept it. You know, everybody just doesn't get the coverage. You know, when the uh, uh, pandemic came, uh, so many people were quoting Psalms 91. So many people were saying, I'm covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. Have you received God as your Lord and Savior? You don't get the coverage. There's mercy and grace, yes. And sometimes we're covered because our parents and our grandparents are praying, praying, praying. And they have uh, uh, received us into the family of God simply by saying, Lord, I'm putting out my faith. I want my grandchild to be healed. Uh, I want my grandchild to be saved. I want my children to be saved. I want them to fulfill their destinies. That way, sometimes we are safe before we receive Christ simply because family members are praying. But that's not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. John 3, when Nicodemus goes to Jesus, he says, what must I do to be saved? So as we acknowledge that the earth belongs to God, how do we get the greatest benefit of this relationship? As we say yes to your will and yes to your way, as we receive uh, you as our Lord and Savior, how do we get the best benefit of this relationship to truly say yes to Lord uh, up to the Lord uh, uh, there's a song that says I say yes Lord I say yes to your will and to your way I will trust you and obey so that's the safest place to be and when you have uh, invited the Lord to begin a relationship with you and allow him to be father that's how we appreciate the earth belonging to him. And he said, not only the earth, he says the fullness there are. The fullness there are. Those that have received the Lord. Now, he died for every person that's walking on this earth. Remember, this is Old Testament. He died for if Jesus came later on, and he died for everybody that's walking the streets today. Anybody that we might meet, remember that Jesus died for them. And uh, they're very precious in his sight. I do believe when David wrote this, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, that David recognized that later on the Messiah is going to come. And people will, uh, will be 
a part of the family of God if they receive him as Lord. The fullness thereof, that's the people, that's the literal dirt, the earth, the soil, the trees, the flowers, everything that's a part of the earth, it belongs to God. And God doesn't want us to uh, shortchange that or as well lightly on that. He wants to, us to fully embrace that. And that's why we call him Lord. Because he's in charge of it all. Alright, and he said, and they that dwell therein. So, he sort of broke it down in three parts. First, the earth is the Lord, then the fullness of their arm, then, and they, just in case, you know, you think, you know, people, you know, are their own. No, uh, uh, we've been bought with a price. No matter what we do with it, we've been paid for. I'm talking New Testament language now. Although David wrote this, this is applicable to the New Testament Christian. So the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of the world and they that dwell therein. And then it says, for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. And we can go all the way back to Genesis, with Genesis 1 and begin to study about, uh, you know, how he created the world. And I believe it's Job 38 where he specifically says, Job, you know, stand up like a man. Can you do what I did? Can you put a door on the ocean? Can you uh, cause the clouds to rain? Can you do this? And, 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 and he questions Job. God already knows the answer. But he's trying to get Job to see, you know, when you compare yourself to me, do you know what you're doing? You know, there's nothing uh, uh, that's too great for me. And so there's nothing too great for God. So when a man, even in our anger and our misunderstanding, Job just did not understand what was going on with him. His children uh, had been taken and, and just so much tragedy. So God understands our emotional state. But at some point, he wants us to back up and just rest in. He is God. God is God all by himself. Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Jehovah Nisi, our banner, Jehovah Shalom, our peace, Jehovah Rapha, our healer, Jehovah Rohai, our shepherd. He's just God. And at some point, man needs to just humble himself, humble themselves, and say, I respect and I honor and I cherish God. There's some things I don't understand, but I believe that he is my father and I choose to trust him even without knowing all the answers. Paul said we know in part. We're not God. We're not going to know all the answers. But at some point, we need to trust him. And those of us who have taken the time to build relationships, and I'm not saying I'm there, but we take the time and we talk to him and we love on him and we study his word. He begins to reveal. He begins to uh, unlock. He begins to answer our seeking. That's just the way he is. And there are some things that he will allow us to know. Yeah, there are some secrets he, 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 he will allow us to know. That's just his way. But we have to act like we want relationship. That's why the Bible in Luke it just says, Seek, seek, seek. Uh, Matthew 6. Uh, 633 60 first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added there's some things we're going to know the physical the material things come but seek him first seek him first and you're going to see you're not going to lack any good thing uh, uh, your provision will already be seen uh, 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 he will come and heal your body he is Jehovah Rapha he is El Shaddai. He's more than enough. He's all sufficient. That's what he told Abraham. I walk before me. I'm El Shaddai. And uh, God is saying that to us today. Even to the New Testament Christian. Even in light of Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Ah, uh, who shall ascend to the hills of the Lord? Let's just pause at this question. Who shall ascend unto the hills 
of the Lord. Who's going to go to higher ground? Who's going to uh, get to know God even the more? Who's going to uh, allow his feet to be made like hind's feet so that he can leap and even dance over the high places of the earth? Who's going to love God that much? Who's going to seek him that much? Who shall ascend unto the field of the Lord? He that have clean hands and a pure heart, who's not lifted up his soul on the vanity, no sworn deceitful. I'm telling you, beloved, it's time for us to ascend to the hills of the Lord. We're living in a time and a place, a time where darkness is everywhere. And our safety, our peace, our joy is embedded into his presence and to our ascension unto the hills of the Lord, where we sit at his feet. But we do like Mary did, we choose to sit at his feet and learn the best part. Where we uh, are desire to go to higher ground, I shared this when I first uh, began the radio broadcast, Higher Ground, that uh, during a tsunami, probably about 10 years ago, uh, terrible earthquake under the ocean. Uh, the, uh, this type is called a tsunami and where that earthquake uh, pushes the water usually on land and it just drowns in and everything inside. It's like an explosion under the, uh, the ocean. The water just goes up and spreads itself out and covers the land and sometimes destroys ground in and everything that's inside. And that's what happened to this uh, particular time, this powerful tsunami. And uh, But something happened a day before. I believe it was like a 24 hours before it happened. The dogs would not be walked on the beach. The dogs would not allow the owners to walk them on the beach. The animals were extremely nervous. It was stated that there were there were uh, monkeys and, uh, on the island and they would not eat elephants that had no peace. Elephants that were trumpeting. And when they say trumpeting, the elephants are just moving about. The tsunami was going to be the next day and those animals knew something. God has given animals sometimes a sense that perhaps we don't have. Uh, we're not animals. We're not comparing ourselves to animals. This just spoke to me. God began to say, it's time to go to higher ground. Those animals were found on higher ground. Uh, after the tsunami subsided and the people came in to search for bodies, many people died of that day. Uh, they found no animals. They said they did not find animals. And later on, the animals had gone to higher ground. And so God is saying it's time to ascend unto the hills of the Lord. There's a hiding place there. There's a place of safety there. There's a place of peace there. Because when we're with God, He is our peace. He's broken down every wall of petition. He is our peace. And so as we get to higher ground and get to know Him, get to really know Him and know His way, as Moses did. He not only knew his faith. When you know God's faith, you know his ability, you know he's all powerful and we need to know that, uh, to respect that. He's all knowing. Uh, he parted the Red Sea. He set those plagues and, and, and just to know our God is greatly beneficial. But we need to know his way. We need to know his faith. Sorry, there's a distinction. When we know his ways, that's what I was talking about. The things that he has done. The great miraculous things that he has done. But knowing his faith means that we know his heart. And we want to know his heart. When we get to know what's on your heart, Lord, what's going on. You know, Holy Spirit, is that I'm, I'm feeling anger. Are you angry? Has man disappointed you? So God is, is He wants us to seek Him out.
so that we will know his face, his heart, what's on his heart. And one of the things that's on his heart today is he wants us to go to higher ground. He wants us to ascend unto the hills of the Lord so we'll know what's going on so we can uh, communicate with God's spiritual spirit. He is a spirit and they, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay, let's go to the next section. It says um, that person will receive uh, the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Let me just say this to you, emphasize to you, is God's nature to bless uh, people who go after him, those that seek him, those that spend time with him, those that make sacrifices to spend time with God. God uh, blesses them. That's just his way. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. Uh, uh, David said in one time, I will bless the Lord at all times. I believe in Psalm 34, I will bless him at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. The Lord is my refuge and my strength, a very present help in times of trouble. When we uh, take the time to ascend into the hills, of the Lord. He comes with blessings. That's just his nature. He comes with blessing and blessings that we have an eternal blessing. And that is to be with him forever and ever. And that is to be heaven bound to go to be with him forever. And even our loved ones that await us there. What a blessing. Yes, there are earthly blessings. Yes, there are earthly riches. But I'm telling you, there, there are riches that are just uh, are unspeakable. It's like we can't even begin to describe those true riches where we get to be with God forever and ever and ever. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord. I'm telling you, we get sometimes gifts from man. We get, here we get gifts from our husbands, our wives, our parents, our children. But there is a gift, a blessing from God. There's no comparison on this earth. We want that. I'm telling you, you want to have that experience. You want to love on Him so much. I went into a grocery store the other day. Y'all, I have not arrived. I'm still worried. But I, I love Him. And I'm going after Him. I'm going after Him. I, I, I bought a few items. And uh, a young man in front of me turned around and told the lady at the register, I'm paying for her. You, I, I don't know you, what he said, I'm paying for it now. I'm paying for this. That has happened to several Christians. Things, that things like that happen. God takes care of his children. He takes care of those who realize that the earth belongs to him. He takes care of those uh, that realize that he's founded it upon the seas and established it upon the flood. He takes care of those who go after him, who want to ascend into the hills of the Lord. The blessings are going to come. That's just God's nature. I'm not saying that everything is going to be perfect on this side. No, there's an eternity that's going to be perfect. Because sometimes, in order for us to use our spiritual muscle, we have to experience our resistance. Sometimes God will allow us to be tested, to be tried, to see if it will stand, to see. It will stand the test of time as to something that is coming greater than God knows. And we're going to have to be strong. And sometimes he will allow us to go through storms because a greater storm is coming. And he wants us to be able to stand and fight and have spiritual mass and muscle to deal with the storms that may come. Praise God. Uh, this is the generation of them that seek and that seek our faith. Oh, Jacob, lift up your heads, O ye gates. And the whole psalm just continues. It's going to end with lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift up your heads, O ye o doors, you ancient doors. And the King of glory shall come. I'm telling you, you want the King of glory to come in. You want the King of Glory to come in and as we study uh, the gate and the doors and where the King of Glory comes in, the interpretation, I can't say exactly what David was, you know, his point, but one of his points, there's a general point that when God comes in, when the King of Glory comes in, when the King comes in that has all power, 
It's all knowing things are going to change. Things are going to get better. So, so, so David says, um, uh, lift up your head so he gave them be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors. Don't grieve. Don't panic. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Walk in confidence because you have a father who can. You have a father who has the ability to set the captives free. You have a father who knows where the problem came from. You don't even know. Sometimes parents don't know. We don't know. But there are times when sometimes uh, there are generational things that have passed down, sins even, and we're not even aware that great granddaddy did this and that's why the family is going through this. But God always you knows. Lift up your head, O ye gates. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. What am I talking about? Okay, individually, you are a door, you are a gate. Uh, it may be talking about community. Uh, community is a door and a gate. And, and, and uh, certain parts of the world, doors and gates. And God is encouraging us. There's nothing too difficult for the King of Glory. Let him in, let him in, let him in. Let him in. The King of Glory shall come in. And change will come. Many of us need change. We need to understand our, our todays and our tomorrows and even our past. Not to stay in the past. It's a great mistake many times when we stay in the past. God cannot do what he wants to do when we've chosen to in the past. He wants us to go forward. And he wants us to lift our heads up and allow the King of Glory to come in. Allow God to come in. He has the answer. He's the only one. I don't care how much your parents love you. I don't care how much your spouse loves you, your children love you. God, many times, is the only one that has the answer. So let the King of Glory come in. Let him come in. Who is this King of Glory? Under the whole Who is this King of Glory? The Lord of Hosts. He is the King of Glory. And I love the Lord of Hosts. Je and Jehovah Sabor. I uh, just love that part of his character where he even sent angels. Of host means that they're host. They're angels. A uh, host being a uh, spiritual being that angels that many times God allows those angels to come and help us if there is a necessity, if there's a need. Daniel needed an answer and Michael came and dealt with the, uh, uh, the prince of Persia, got that answer to Daniel. God will send help when help is needed. There's no other force on this earth can do that. So join me and embrace this song. The earth is the Lord. And the fullness there are the world and they that dwell therein. Uh, and let the King of Glory continue to come in. A problem over here, a problem over there. Uh, it's never too difficult for God and you don't worry Him when you keep bringing Him. I would rather bring it all to Him than to try to uh, figure it out myself and mess it up. Guarantee, mess up. Uh, invite the King of Glory to come in. He's a fixer. He's a healer. Uh, he specializes. Uh, he's a pro provider. He's a protector. He's our shield, our buckler, our high tower. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for this song. I'm going to lift up a prayer for you. Beloved, embrace the Word of God. That's forever settled in heaven. Uh, this song will minister to you continuously. Read it again and again and again. Now may the Lord bless and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance unto you and grant you his peace. Again, you're welcome to uh, be with us next week on Fresh Word. Welcome. I was so delighted to be with you in the Lord's Word, in his Word. Greetings. This is uh, Dolores Johnson Spears. Pastor of Kingdom Church House of Prayer. You tonight, I'm just going to lift up a prayer. May the Lord bless and keep us. May He cause His face to shine upon us. May He lift up His countenance unto us and grant us His peace in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen, amen, and amen.